remote PC. Most people that work from home will have to remote somebody at some. Well, I don't know why I put my sunglasses on. I'm going to take them off. Um, yeah, for years as an IT consultant, I've used remote PC desktop control solutions. I've used TeamViewer for the longest time. Um, and several months ago, well, actually, probably a year ago at the start of the whole corona bollocks, um, it started flopping up these messages going, commercial use detected. And I'm like, this isn't commercial use. I don't use it commercially. I use it to remote control my Uncle Dave in Spain, who's constantly blowing up his computer. Um, my teenage daughter, who is in college on the other side of America. Um, my kids. And I also use it to control my Plex server, which is a my media server that lives in that cupboard over there that you can't see. Plex is excellent, by the way. I should do a video about that. It's my own personal Netflix where I keep all of my home movies, downloaded media, any TV stuff that I download that I want to stream to the TV personally. So, for example, I download a lot of um, British TV series, completely going off track here, um, and stream to the TV. And I wanted something that I can sit at my desktop here or on any of my many laptops or even on my phone and be able to connect to... to upload a video or download a video or delete it or if my uncle calls me to connect to his machine in Spain and explain how something works or why his email is broken or to connect to my daughter in South Carolina to uh, help her with the homework or whatever and TeamViewer was excellent for that but it's decided that I'm doing commercial use so it blocks me which is a real pain in the bum anywho why am I <laughs> What am I waffling about? Well, I've, I've waffled for two minutes. So, anyway, um, remote PC. Uh, I've used loads of different options. Um, I've blogged about them on various times on my website from Cloudberry Remote Desktop. It's free, really good solution, but it's clunky. Would frequently crash on me or lock up. The audio was never any good when I was talking to um, any of my kids. I'd have to end up doing like a Skype call and the remote desktop call. Um, and I didn't like the way it was constantly asking for verification. Uh, Chrome Remote Desktop is pretty good. It runs, but you've got to install Chrome. I don't like being forced to install a browser I don't use. I'm, I tend to be a Firefox or the new Chrome-based Edge user. Ultra VNC, really neat. I'd, if you're techie, I'd suggest you look at Ultra VNC. Um, but it's a pain to install. So it comes down to what's something that's really simple out of the box, it just works and is the right price. TeamViewer at $600 at the time I'm recording this is not the right price for me, just for a remote desktop for my kids. They kind of assume that you must be a big company if you want to do it. Uh, I'm not, it's me, here, in my little cave. Um, remote PC, this is the kitty. Uh, they list their prices at $50. Um, that's because I've got more than 10 computers because I control at least three and I also do my mother-in-law and my other three kids and um, it's nice to be able to connect to anyone's machine if they say to me oh Nick I've got a problem can you help me with this which is invariably the case it's like being a mechanic everyone always asks you to fix their car right um, so I just paid the $52 for the first year it lets me have 10 machine licenses. It's really simple. I can log in through any browser and remote control people through a browser session, or I can install the client on my machine and then really natively run it on the machine. So let's have a quick look at how this thing plays. Uh, where am I gonna start? So here's remote PC. I'm gonna write a blog on this. I'll put it on the lesson. You can read about it. Um, you literally log into their website. Well, in fact, let's do it. Here I am at the website, so I'm gonna log in. You can see that LastPass has filled in my email and password. When you buy the subscription, you get a trial. Go and try it, it's free. Um, you create an account with them, then you log in. So when I log in here through the browser, oh, excellent. The first thing it's done is it sent me an email because I haven't logged in through the browser on this machine saying, oh, hang on, um, who are you? You need to confirm this browser is a trusted, de trusted device to ensure the continued security of your account. We sent you a verification email. Um, so I can actually look at the email on my phone. I could do it through here, but I don't want you pesky buggers reading all of my email. Sure enough, here I have an email from Remote PC. Can you see that? You have tried to log into an account from this device. It gives me the IP address and the details of my PC. 
um, it tells me what the browser is and says, do I want to add it to my trusted devices? I'm going to click add it to my trusted devices. Um, this device has been successfully added. So if I just put my password back in again and try to log in, I'm hoping this lets me log in. And there I am. So what this shows me is the machines that I currently have set up on my remote PC account. So big fat desktop, that's this desktop that I'm recording this on right now. The reason that I have it installed here is that if I'm away from home, um, going to see my kids for example, if I'm using any laptop I can go here, log in and I can remote control my home PC to do things. Here I've got my Uncle Dave, he's in Spain. He has two machines, it tells me one's offline and one's online. Uh, Ingrid is the mother-in-law who I also help. Here's my MacBook Air, it's this little MacBook that's sitting down here. Here's my Plex server. Uh, Tony is one of my friends uh, who has, sometimes I was setting him up with Office, so I whacked it on there so I can connect to him. Viola's my daughter, and Tegan's my other daughter. And then I have uh, this machine that's offline. So for example, hey, I'm just gonna go and connect to the Plex server. This is my media server. And what it tells me is I can connect using the viewer light or I can connect using the desktop application. I'm running the desktop application. So if I just said connect using the viewer, this does it all through the browser. Haven't got to have any security, uh, any applications installed. It's just running through the browser. Every machine on my network has a key. The little security aspect is you enter a secure key for each of the machines. And here we are. Here's my machine running. This is my Plex server. All this is ever doing is running Plex and I have a torrent browser downloading various things that I want to watch, all legally, of course. Um, and I can use and run this machine just as if I was native. It's pretty neat, right? And this is, and that's that, you know how it works. Um, if I close down the browser session, now let's assume that I haven't gone to the website and logged in, I'm just running natively on my machine. What you'll notice is running down here, there is the remote access. If I double click on this, this is the desktop client. Again, I'm seeing the same uh, machines I was looking at through the browser, but it gives me a bit more power to connect to things. So if I connect here through Plex server, this runs, it does the same authentication. It would normally ask me for the pin, but in this case, I've entered the pin and said, remember this pin. Um, it runs like a, a normal um, remote desktop tool, but I have all the other options, like I can do file transfers, chats, a whiteboard. I can record what I'm doing. I can lock the remote machine. Um, I can send control or deletes, and I can enable sound. One of the really nice functions is I use this to do remote control of um, friends and family's machines to do full Windows updates. Um, and it will even screen share while it's doing the reboot. It will show you that it's applying everything. Then it will reboot while it, you know, while it's turned off. Remote PC will come up and say lost connection. As soon as the machine comes back online, it just continues and lets you log in. So it really is a, a true remote PC desktop solution. Anyway, I've waffled enough. Um, I really like it. It just works. It's dead simple. Um, gets a big thumbs up from me. I don't make any money from these recommendations. If you just want a really neat remote PC solution that you can run on your phone, you can run on MacBook, you can run on Windows, you can run on Linux, you can run anywhere you like, remote PC by iDrive. Uh, go and check it out. Uh, that's that. Enjoy.